I'll be, I want to say total about for this day, total about for waking us up. I'll be, I ask that you can forgive us for any past sins, any transgressions, and also forgive the sins and transgressions of those before us, our ancestors. And I'll be, I ask that your anger will not last forever, but I ask that you can have mercy upon us. And I ask that you bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we can learn from our mistakes and also learn from the mistakes of others. And I'll be, I ask that you can strengthen all the brothers on this call and the ones that are not on this call. And I ask that you can strengthen the Mishpaka as a whole. I'll be, I ask that you can give us the strength to continue in this life. And I ask that the affairs of this life will not bring, a, bring us down. I'll be, I ask that the affairs of this life will not wear our flesh down. And I also ask that the affairs of this life will not wear our spirit down. I'll be, I ask that you give us the strength to overcome all things to overcome the affliction of the flesh and the affliction of the spirit, the Ruach. And I'll be, I want to say Torah about for your Torah, your judgments, your testimonies, and all the things you have blessed us with, the physical things and the spiritual things. And I'll be, I ask on this day that you can enlarge our hearts, strengthen our spirits, feed us with your word, and I ask that you can Guide us with your hand, walk with us to the end as we seek eternal life. Blessed you are Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh. Bless anybody that comes in the name of Yahweh. Hell yeah. Hello, yeah. So that Rabbi, once again, Shah Shamar, do appreciate the beautiful Tefilla. I'm um, asking the creator to please be with us all and he guide our words, guide our thoughts to even be in tune with him. Um, tonight, I would like to respect as well to Moe Dawood. I believe he just came on the line. Respect to you, my brother. Um, tonight, I want to speak about life, right? Um, we are all living life and we're all dealing with certain things. Um, some good, some bad. You know, we have our mishpaka, our family. A lot of us have our vote out, our, our jobs, our workplace, and things that we have to do as, as men. And um, last week, we were um, acknowledging, some people were observing um, Purim, right? And Purim from the book of Esther, the real name was Hadassah, right? Um, really focused on this Hebrew word, pur, which means to, to lock or to cast a lot or chance. Um, that word perm or purs only in the book of Esther. Normally when they're talking about lots, you know, like most of may say we cast lots for the land and, and during the book of Yehoshua or cast lots to try to determine certain things. The Hebrew word that they use is goral. And goral, um, chance and lot is what, really what I want to focus on because Things happen, right? How do we cope? How do we maintain ourselves? How do we continue on in life when these things happen? Now, during the time of Hadassah, you know, they had this wicked man, Haman, because he was in power, he wanted to destroy all of the Hebrews that was in that area, you know, and they send it throughout the different provinces and they proclaimed on the 13th day of our daughter that they were going to destroy all these Hebrews. But it was by the help of the creator and him putting Hadassah in a place where she was and Mordecai being the man that he was in his wisdom that we were able to save our people. So the name of the, the talk tonight is Be Strong, Be Strong, and We Will Be Strengthened. And Ivrit is chazak, chazak, we need chazek, right? Because I want us to continue to be in strong, to be strong. I want us to continue to be encouraged because life will put a toll on us. And we have to find a way through everything that we experience in life. How can we keep moving forward? How can we draw near and stay near to the most high? How can we continue to build relationships with with one another, build strong relationships with our family, with our nashim and our yeladim, our children. You know, these things are essential 
so we can come back as a nation and be strong as a nation. So I would like to start with the first precept, if we may, and I would need a reader, anyone who's available, um, definitely can, can assist me. Um, but I would like to start in the book of um, Ecclesiastes, um, also known as Quohelet, in the ninth chapter. And I would like for us to start in the um, seventh verse through the through the twelfth verse. So if, if I can have a read of Babakusha, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll read for you, Ot. Amen. Let's be. Who's that? Bro G. Bro G. Told our Rabbi. Thank you kindly. I appreciate it. Yep, in the book of Ecclesiastes, if we may, the ninth chapter, the seventh verse through the twelfth verse. Ecclesiastes 9, chapter, okay, 7, okay. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 7 says, Go thy way, mm -hmm. eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For Yah now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Right. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of the life of thy vanity, mm -hmm. which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither mm -hmm. thou goest. Right. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in evil time when it falleth suddenly, up suddenly upon them. Told our Rabbi, bro G. It said, when men or the sons of men are snared in evil time when it suddenly fall upon them. It, it started off by saying, enjoy your portion. Enjoy your life. Work hard. Everything that you put your hand to do do it with all the strength that the Almighty has blessed you with. Find your Isha, enjoy your wife, enjoy your days, your time, striving after the whim or vanity, as they put it. And then it goes on to say that these evil times, these hard times will eventually come. And when these hard times come, what do we do? How do we handle that? How do we process it? Keeping your mind strong and keeping a yah like mine will help you make it through. And that's why to Helium 133, it mentions how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Because if I know that my brother Broji or Mori Dawu, or Sar Yochanan. My brothers are there to help me when these hard times come. I have that assistance that I need. And we all need that help. Y'all saying, enjoy. Shalomo is, is speaking, saying, enjoy what you have. But just know for surety that it's gonna come times when you're gonna have hardships and you're gonna experience certain things. So what do we do? How, how do we move forward from there? How do we ensure that we don't lose our trust or our imuna in the creator when those hard times come? And these are things just to ponder on and to think about. Because when you start to really focus on your experiences and the things that you went through, you, you understand the hardships are truly there to elevate you 
and to prepare you for the next stage. Because if we went through life all the time and we did not have these barriers or have these moments where we really needed to try to figure out a way to make it through, how do we know where our strength truly lies? So embrace it because it's gonna come, it's happening. I know brothers on the line, I know myself, I'm going through things. But I still have to find time to build with my brothers, to get into the word of the creator, to find ways to help me make it through. Let's go to our next precept of Akwa Shah, and then we're gonna open up a little dialogue. This next precept, Broji, we can go to um, Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 47, seven through nine. Okay. This is dealing with um, Yaakov, Jacob. Genesis 47, seven through nine. Okay. And Yosef brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, how old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are in are in 130 years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my father, the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, no, that, that was perfect. Um, told our, told our about for that. So Yaakov, and we all should be familiar with the life of Yaakov. He was 130 years when he went before Pharaoh. And he said, Pharaoh, few and evil have been the days of my life because that man went through some things. From the time that he had to leave his father's house because his brother wanted to slay him, to making it to where his uncle was, being tricked for his wife, and then have to serve 21 years for both two Nashim and for the cattle, leaving there, going back to meet brother Esau and would be fearful of what was gonna happen. He said, few and evil was the days of my life, but what did he do? He still blessed Pharaoh. So that's a, that is indication to us, regardless of what we're going through, we still have to be a blessing to other people. It's all right to express some of the things that we may have experienced. You know, pressures of raising a family, sometimes medical issues that may stop us from, from working and doing what we need to do. We may have a reduction in income or loss of employment, incarcerated family members. We're trying to cope with, with all these things. And I just want to ask the brothers, anybody on the line, what are some of the things that you do? to try to cope with some of the experiences in life. When you go through some things, how, what are some of the things that you do to try to really help you make it through? Bat Yosef, Bakusha. Shalom, shalom, Maki. How you doing this evening? And shalom to you as well, my brother. I'm doing well. Hopefully everything is well on your end. Okay, koto, koto. You know, you know, uh, mm. Most high is wonderful in all his ways. I'll say that first and foremost. Uh, that's interesting because that that you're speaking to me right now, because that was my day today, actually. Uh, little testimony uh, in regards to what's going on. So my, I don't kind of hit it on the head uh, based on what was going on with the COVID vaccine and everything like that. As of right now, the most high has me unemployed. So I was in a predicament today where I was kind of uh, thinking to myself, like, man, what? I don't, I don't really have anything to do. And I was getting into a state of my mind of, I, I would say, depression. I was getting there. I was getting to that point of, like, wow, I don't really have much going on. So I started doing some yard work, 
just to keep my mind and my hands busy. And I took that moment to, to truly, uh, to truly glean from what the most high had to say. It, it got to the point where I was out there, I was just listening to nature. That's, that's really the state of how low I felt in that moment. Uh, Isha came uh, from, from helping out and she was like, hey, what's going on? What's wrong with you? You know, of course me, I'm like, you know, I'm good, I'm good. everything is straight. But it's just like, sometimes you can't even hide it because it was like written all over my face. So I was just, I, I kept it 100 and I was like, you know, I just, I just feel like, you know, I don't really have much going on with myself. And of course the, the Isha being, being, a, being a rear guard as she is, she's like, no, you're awesome. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on putting your faith in the creator. And, you know, just those reassuring words uh, from your significant other as well is definitely a help. But for me, I, I truly had to take a moment to uh, just to listen. I'll say, just to listen, listen what the Most High has to offer you, listen to what the Most High has already created. I was even listening, and I'm trying not to get too spiritual on it. I was even listening to the birds. The birds were out there just chirping away. And I'm like, wow, I'm over here mowing this grass. And I'm like, these birds don't have no covering. These birds don't have nothing, but they don't lack in anything. <laughs> you know, and forgive me right now, because I just, like I said, I just chimed in. Uh, uh, right now almost, and I, I just got the word, so I don't have the scripture right off the top of my head, but I know that scripture talks about, like, the birds, they don't lack in nothing. How much more does the creator provide for you in situations where you don't have anything? You know, so, uh, <laughs> like I said, the most high is all, awesome in all his ways. I, uh, mm. <laughs> I just, uh, I yield the flow on that one. And again, uh, what do you say? Most high is always on time. I say it like that. Most always on time. So that's my little testimony. I think it's right on time with that. Mm. Mm. Told our told our Rabbi for sharing. And um the most high definitely will make a way in the wilderness. We're gonna touch on that tonight. And um I pray that you just continue to keep keep your mind strong, you know, um, and continue to push forward and um stay in tune. Listen to that small still voice. That's exactly what you have to do. Get into that quiet place. Told our Baba Sharon, Yosef. Yes, Shah Samar, but Baba Shah, my brother. Floor is yours. Yeah. yeah. So, so the question was, you know, how do we um, overcome, you know, trials and tests and, you know, affliction? Yeah, just how, how do you cope with it? Right, right. What do you do to kind of just help you during these times? Because chance happens to us all as we just read Enthusiastes. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, one thing, well, something I noticed that, you know, ever since I was younger, I would, uh, I would, I want to say daydream a lot, but I would get lost in my thoughts a lot, you know, um, when I was younger, you know, when I get older, you know, nothing really changed, but I noticed, you know, that the adversary, he will try to use my, you know, use, you know, my daydreaming or, you know, my thoughts to get me to meditate on, you know, the negative things, you know things that, you, that can bring your, your spirit down. So, you know, I, I've been recently, you know, catching it. So one thing I do now is I try to use that same energy to, you know, meditate, focus on, the, you know, the positive things. And, you know, I focus on, you know, the, the positive things of the most high in his word. So I, I basically imagine myself um, elevating, you know, maybe like a year from now, five years from now in a in a better position, you know, that I'm currently in as far as my relationship with the most high. So one thing I, you know, I do is I just, you know, try to focus on the possibilities of, you know, how close I can be to the most high and, you know, the rewards for living a righteous life. Those are things that I meditate on. And I, of course, you know, I, I keep catching the negative thoughts, you know, I yield. I mean, Torah Rabbah, thank you for reflecting on that positivity. That, I mean, it's, it's essential that we have that state of mind, even when these uh, situations arise, you know, we don't want to um, sink too low. It's all right to, to go there a little bit because we're human, we're natural. I mean, these are things that we, these are a part of our natural emotions, but the creator definitely does not want us to stay in this, um, we call it, um, the Hebrew word is loon, 
you know, which means to murmur or but also means to dwell or to lodge in a certain place, in that place of negativity. But we know how the murmurings really started to haunt us and um, really get us when we were in the wilderness. My brother Uzael, Babakusha, the floor is yours, my Lord. Uzael, I'm showing that you're on mute. There you go. Hey, don't use there. If you're saying something, if you don't hear nothing, you might have to uh, probably log out and log back in. All right, while we get Uzael, um, get his um, his ability to speak, um, everything up and running. Let's go to our brother, um, Aaron. Shalom, shalom. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, shalom, shalom. Everything is well. Okay. Okay. Uh, you said something earlier uh, that 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 really uh, hit for me. You said something about um, no matter what we go through, we still have to be a blessing onto others. And um, I think that it's only natural, especially for being in this walk that it's important that no matter what we're going through not, it's not that you put it to the side but understand that you have we have to be more grateful you know and um mm -hmm. one of the things that i uh mostly do when i'm uh going through you know these situations uh i like to sit down and reflect and i'm just kind of you know try to uh stay away from loud noises like yourself said you know be around nature and um I like to think about my past and uh, kind of think about um, how far I've come and um, all the obstacles that I did make it past and right. that I'm able to make it past these obstacles, you know, and these barriers and I just need the strength. But it's always it's always good to remind yourself how far you've made it and how far uh, the Most High has pushed you, you know, and um, just giving you the strength to make it through whatever it is that he needed you to get through. So I think that... Uh, being uh quiet uh and um not being being to yourself all the time but taking that time for yourself at first and also like to uh be amongst the children you know uh when i be when i'm around the children i see i see nothing but pureness and positivity and um just just staying peaceful so uh yeah that's what i wanted to share in terms of uh you know something that i do when uh i'm going through the you know certain thoughts or feeling that I'm at my lowest. I just like to reflect and just remind myself that I can do it and that the most high is with me and I just gotta stay consistent. Okay. Hallelujah. So that robot for that um Mahalong. And um a few weeks ago when I had the opportunity to teach, that's one thing I was kind of sharing with the group. You know, find that time that you can get that quiet time. You know, actually last week, last Yom Kamishi, last Thursday. I took the day off of work and um, I used that day to fast. Uh, I was kind of telling the brothers how it was good to fast. It's that quad bond, a way to draw near in lieu of our sacrifices. And one thing I did that day, um, it's a beautiful park in our subdivision. You know, I went out there and just laid in the grass and just allowed that sun just to hit me, get that energy from the sun. And it was so peaceful and it was so calm and, and just had my thoughts reflecting on the most high and, and that was helping me make it through, you know, and you mentioned as well, the Yeladim, the children, you know, as men, we are the leaders of our household and Torah Rabbah, Yafa, Nashim, our women. But when we show that strength, when we're there encouraging the family, uplifting the family, it really helps the entire dynamics of the household. And especially when our, when our Nashim, our women are right there with us, it just makes it that much better. And then the children fall in line. So we have to find a way somehow, you know, to, to whatever we can do to help us get past whatever we're going through, we have to do that. Because as we mentioned, the Yaakov, when he went before Pharaoh, if you think about Yaakov's life, though, when he found out that Yosef, the son that he loved dearly from his Isha Raquel that passed away, Right, think about the death he experienced, so much he, he went through. But once he found out that Yosef was 
gone. He thought he was dead at the time. He went into a state of depression. I mean, to the point when you read the scriptures, you don't see any communication with him and the most high during that time frame, right? I mean, the narrative completely switches over to Yosef and you see how Yosef was moving as a man. But right when they came and told Yaakov that Yosef was alive, his spirit was revived. And then Yah spoke to him and said, now you can go down to Egypt. So in order for us to keep that connection with the almighty, it's imperative that we keep our spirit intact. We will, we will have our moments that is perfectly fine, but please do not stay in that place. If you find yourself digging low and, and, and getting to that area where you feel like there's a, a point of no return, that's when, again, get with your brothers, get with people that you trust, God-fearing people to, to try to help you out, find that quiet, quiet place and find a way to get back to your normal self. And again, these hardships, a lot of times, factual is preparing us for the next stage. And we're going to learn that in the next scripture that we're going to go to. So my brother, Bro G, if we can, please, let's go to the book of Bob Midbar, the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter. We're going to do um, verses 1 through 10 first. This is what I don't want us to do when these hardships come. Because these things will prolong our healing process if we adopt these things we're about to read right now in the book of Numbers. All right, the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore have the master brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then oh, Moses. Mubakusha, if you can just stop for a moment. Do you see the mentality of us at this time? This is right after we went to spy out the land that the Most High has promised to us. This is still the first year since we came out of Israel. Still in the first year. And because we went over and we saw the people of this place and the way that they were built and the, the cities and the way they were fortified, we did not feel that we was adequate enough to go in and take over that land. When, when the pressures of life gets on us and it feels like it's too much for us to handle, we cannot go into a place, again, we, we, this word loom, to, to, to murmur or to dwell, to buy, to grumble, to complain, because then we're, we're easing our way further and further away from the Almighty. Who is there to help us make it through these moments and these times? For the people were thinking with a, a slave mentality, we're speaking out of fear right now, and said, let us make us a captain and go back to slavery because we don't want to go through the process because it is a process to reach our promised land, to reach our full potential, to reach the blessing that the creator has in store for us, right? Roji Bavakusha, let's continue on and let's see how Moshe and Aharon, how they handle this in Yehoshua and Caleb. Verse four, and they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. 
And if the and if y'all delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against Yah, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yah is with us. Fear them not, but all the congregation bade stone, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of Yah appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the mm. children of Israel. Uh oh, the glory of the Most High appeared. But did you see the different Ruach? This is the spirit that we have to have. That spirit of Yehoshua and Caleb, the son of Yefune. Where they say the Most High is definitely with us. Fear not what you're going through. Even though I know it's a lot. I know. I mean, sometimes I look up and I'm like, yeah, what is, what is this? I'm only one man. I'm trying. He knows exactly what you're going through. But when it said only rebel not against Jehovah, nor fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is removed from over them. Can, can anybody just elaborate, you know, just, just some wisdom that they can share? What, what do you think Yehoshua and Caleb is, is telling the people when they say rebel not against the creator and fear not the people of the land? Everybody, you have the power to unmute. I'm Marcus, I think you're trying to talk, but we can't hear you. Um, something going on in your mic. Yeah, we have a few hands up. All right, let's let's try our brother Uzael again. Hopefully, uh, he's good to go this time. Just your thoughts on what we just read. Yeah, Uzai, I believe your sound is still out. All right, let's let's go ahead um, with um, Shah Shamar first. Mubaku Shah. Okay, uh, yeah, basically what I got from it, I was, you know, thinking about um, the the first part you brought out, you know, how they wanted to go back mm -hmm. to Egypt or Miss Ryan. And one thing I thought about, you know, you know, just think about that today, you know, our grown men, you know, that have families, you know, or just, you know, a single grown man, you know, asking to go back into slavery, you know, and asking to go back in bondage, you know, you know, I just, that's, that's the way I see it, you know, it's just, it's just hard to think about, you know, you know, trying to undo what the most high already did. And then um, as far as, you know, what, you know, Joshua said, uh, you know, I just think about when he said, you know, don't rebel, Mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, don't rebel against the Most High. Basically, don't try to go against what the Most High already put in place and don't go against what the Most High already commanded you to do. Mm -hmm. And if he took you out of an area, don't try to go back. If he tells you don't fear, you know, basically see him as your strength, as your confidence, you know, not your own flesh. That's what I got from you. Amen. That's just going back to Egypt bondage and it starts everything is right here in the mind that's where it starts and that and that's how we were thinking but we were really afraid of our true potential afraid of what we truly can become because we get in a comfort zone and we get complacent because we have this safety net but when you look around and look at the condition of our people you know we still have a very long way to go so that's it's too much work for us to do, for us to be like, okay, this is good, or where we were was okay. But if you know there's something better ahead for you, you have to reach out and try to grab that. Aaron, Mubakusha, the floor is yours. Okay, um, I was gonna say, uh, Joshua is telling them like, uh, we came this far, don't turn your back now, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's the point of turning back? Is is that is this what I really want? You know, and um, 
it's interesting that I was kind of going over that story not too long ago. And um, with the uh, the spies, when they came back, they was, they was, it's like, it's like they ain't, they seen something they ain't never seen before and they try to bring that back. But at that point, Joshua, mind and body and soul was already set forward and he wasn't, he wasn't with it. So what I got from that was, yeah, uh, he was telling him, yo, don't turn your back now. I came this deep, it ain't, it make no sense. And man, to it, I rebuy, you're, you're spot on. That's exactly what he was reminding the people of. And we have to, the brothers, we have to keep that type of ruah. You know, when everybody else is like, man, I, I can't go on. We have to encourage them and inspire them. And we have to allow that light of Yah to shine. My brother Uzziel put it in the chat. He said, Cain, to rebel or to speak against or thoughts of doubt or lack of, of faith in Yah, right? I mean, we're, we're lacking that imuna. It's, it, it never said it was going to be. That's why it took us to Bereshit first when, when Yaakov went before Pharaoh. He said, few and evil. You know, I, I think about my life, you know, losing, losing my father at a young age, I mean, eight years old. But then the positive side, because you always want to look at the positive side of things, but he did give the family the Torah, right? So he gave us a way that my time is limited. Even as Dr. King said, stated when he did all his great works, you know, longevity has its place. Everybody would like to live a long life, but when the Most High calls you home, he calls you home. But here, us, we who are part of the living, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to uphold the creator in a way that we always bring him forth his energy in a light that the Most High is just and fair with everything that he does. Even if he chastises us, sometimes it's, it's deserving. We have to be accountable. We have to be able to take it for what it is. But then he gives the opportunity to touch you and ask the key to return. St. Moshe, Babakusha, the floor is yours, my brother. Shalom, shalom, brother. Um, <clears throat> so the, the way I, I see it is maybe slightly from a different point of view. Mm. And that <clears throat> the people, I mean, they seen all the wonders that the Mosai did when he brought us out of Egypt. So it's not that they didn't know. It's almost like um, the same way we got today. We got, we battled out of the flesh and people, we want, we want the Mosai to be what we want them to be. And we, we want them to move out of the way we want them to move. So when it's not going on, as we see at the beginning of uh, chapter 14, it's not, he's not moving by the heart of what the people want. But then Joshua and Caleb is trying to show them who he really is and try to get them to, re, you know, return back to the Lord in that, in that point of view. So it's like you're dealing with a rebellious people to a degree that it's not the fact they didn't know, they knew it just wasn't moving the way that they wanted to move. So therefore, mm -hmm. we just going to go ahead and do what we want to do. So they're trying to not so much uplift the people's spirit in a sense, but trying to get them to realize the power and that we're supposed to be following. And that's why he said um, in verse eight, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. So <clears throat> we have a, a responsibility, a covenant that we got to continue on to do so we can get to where we want to be, but they not want, but uh, because it's not moving, the way that they want to move, they want to rebel against it. I yield on that. So I rebuy for that wisdom. Now that, that is spot on. We have to earn it. It's not going to be given to us. It's not going to be um, rolled out on the red carpet. We have to earn it. You're right. If Yah delights in us, then how do we get the most high to delight in us? And that's really truly by our obedience. That's really by us truly it's doing that self-reflection and always finding out ways to refine ourselves, to make ourselves better. We're not perfect. We all sin. We all fall short. And a lot of times when the hardships come on us, we know the reason why. I remember my first marriage and I was going through a divorce. And I, I could not deal with my Isha again because she was impregnated and the baby was not mine. 
But then I looked at the, the situation and I was like, it's not really about her and what she's going through. The Most High is trying to show me something. And what he was trying to show me, because I had infidelity issues myself, he was showing me, if you want a family, a successful family like you say you do, well, conduct yourself as a man's supposed to conduct himself. We can't be out here doing anything that we want to do, and then we expect the Most High to be there to, to help and support us. We have to make sure that Yah delights in us, in our deeds, in our works, in our thoughts. So we're doing things contrary to what the Creator, right, Mori Dawu, focus. If we're doing things that's not of Yah, there's no way we can expect to have his full support. And even as we, we've been reading about the offerings lately and, and you know, this, the asham, the guilt offering or the kata, the sin offering, you know, the purpose of these offerings, once again, was to draw near, to acknowledge our fault and to tashu. That is the name of the game. To be able to shoo return Turn from your sin. And then we will have that support system that we need from the creative, from a divine aspect, and then from the brotherhood. So we'll get respect from one another. Brother, be willing to go to bat for you because they know that you are a man that's about your word. And when you do fall short, you don't make excuses. Mori Dawu, Bavakwasha. Kind of don't um great 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 uh lesson and dialogue so far don't um told our bar um one well I put focus in the group and as you're um uh, um uh continuing to speak I'm I'm just thinking about the aspect of where does greatness come from um and how the people couldn't obtain that greatness because they were focused on the external factors. So when you look at those of us who are uh, great, whether, you know, now or in the history of, you know, athletes or musicians or um, um, even great in your day-to-day -day life at your job, you know, people look at you as a uh, standard. It is because you are able to focus and zone out everything else. And it seems as if, as men, sometimes we get distracted by the things going on around us so that we can't hear. And then that's when we're looking for a voice that we can say, all right, look, well, we're following this voice, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna land on this. So they said, let us appoint another leader. So let us appoint another voice that we can follow because the voice of the creator through Moshe was sit with, was was saying something that we did not want to focus on so let us find another voice that we can focus on and say this is the voice that we're following so as men we have to learn how to focus and tone out the voice of the flesh and um uh being complacent complacency as opposed to seeking that greatness and focusing on the voice of the creator so mm -hmm. i yield on that at all hallelujah to whatever by yep tone it down being able to understand what the creator is showing us. Right? Say, Aye, I should, Aye, I will be that which I will be. Just let the most high do what he's, he, he knows he's the mastermind, the master architect. He's orchestrating everything. Don't allow these hardships to take us to a, to a point of no return. He's preparing us for that next level. We have to study, show ourselves approved. Study yourself. Look deep within. Let's go to the book of Yirmiyahu, Babakasha, Jeremiah. We'll go to the 30th chapter. Verse 
verses one through seven. So this is where we are right now. So if someone's saying, let, let us go back to Egypt, maybe we will have a different state of mind, understand that and we're following the word of Yah. Jeremiah chapter 30, one through yeah, seven. Yeah, Torah. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yah saying, thus speaketh Yah Elohim of Israel saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Mm -hmm. For lo, the days come, saith Yah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith Yah. Mm -hmm. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. Mm -hmm. and, and these are the words that Yah spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith Yah, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Mm -hmm. Ask me now and see whether a man do travail with child. Mm -hmm. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and mm -hmm. all things are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It right. is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he okay. shall be saved out of it. <laughs> so he mentioned in the first part that he's going to shoot, turn this captivity, turn these hardships from us, turn us from being a people, quote unquote, inferior to another nation, right? And he will allow us to return to the land that he swore unto our fathers and allow us to possess it. But then he goes on to say during this promise of deliverance, that wow, we, we see the voice of trembling, right? Of fear. Now, not not the Yere, you know, when we say, you know, Lo Yera or Yere Yehoah, the fear of Yah. This fear is Pachad, which is more like a dread, more like being terrified. And we see it. Our brothers being slain. We see it. Systemic racism and how things are tied up against us. Legalized genocide, how they killing us. Of course, it's a lot of fear. And it is a time of trouble. But Yah, speaking through the prophet Yahu right now, but out of it, we shall be saved. And we should al allow these words to give us that reassurance that we need. That this, this trouble that we have experienced for so many years, there's going to come a time where it's going to change. But again, we have to earn our position. We have to put in the work. We have to be dedicated. We have to be true avadim, true servants before the Most High. So that way we can have that protection when these when these evils come upon us, because they will come. No man escapes it. That's why the psalmist said, you know, weeping may tarry through the night, but joy cometh in the morning. We go through it sometimes. We will experience hardships. There's no getting away from it. But as Mori Dawu said, we have to focus and listen to that small, still voice. Find that quiet time. I mean, sometimes as men, we, we bottle things in. It's, we have to find a way to release without the murmuring. It's okay to vent, but we're not going to dwell in, on that place. So when Yaakov met Esau, he wept. It was a release. It's not a sign of weakness for men to cry or to let it out. Why are we carrying on so much baggage? Why are we trying to take on the world by ourselves? How good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. We are there. That's why we have these calls. That's why we strengthen one another. 
to let you know you're not alone. You're not going through this by yourself. So don't carry that burden by yourself. Let's be a little more empathetic, a little more considerate. This is our portion, Israel. Y'all created us as his servants to be the light to the world. We have to be the light to one another. This is where it starts. That's the promise of deliverance. We'll hit a few more precepts and call it an evening. I just know that, you know, we, we have things that we're going through. And I just want to let the brothers know that you're not alone. And we will make it through. Just continue to seek the face of the creator. Continue to build with his people. Hmm. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. It reads, my son, despise not the chastening of Yah, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yah love, he correct, even as a father, the son in whom he delight. Amen. My son, despise not the chastening of the Most High, neither spurn his correction. For whom Yah loveth, he corrects. Your hardships, we spoke about it tonight. Your experiences, everything that you went through. Use that word Yahak to make right, to prove you, to see who you truly are. These things are, it's, it's all a part of the process. That's all I'm saying. We have our good times, we'll be joyful. Things are going well. But then we have those times where the most high will humble us. And we have to be able to, um, to understand what Yah is trying to tell us when he sits us down. And we can't, turn to self-medication, right? You can't turn to alcoholism and substance abuse to try to cope with our problems. We know we take it to the almighty. That's how we roll. And the most high is gonna send the right people in your life to help you make it through. Because once you Keep the creator in the equation, then y'all be able to build and work with you. It's when we start to ease God out of things. And what they say, they call that your ego, right? <laughs> right. Let's not ease them out. Continue to draw closer and nearer until the Almighty. Deuteronomy 29. One through five, and then verse eight. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, one through five. These are the words of the covenant which Yah commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that Yah did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land. The great temptations which thine great eyes temptations. have seen, mm-hmm. which thy eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet Yah have not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness your clothes are not waxing old upon you and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot verse 8 and we took their land 
and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to the half tribe of Manasseh. Luckily, yeah, just read just a slight, slightly different, slightly different. And I apologize for that. But I do want to, I want the brothers to kind of elaborate on this. That verse when he said, Yehovah have not given you a heart to know, eyes to see, and ears to hear until this day. Now, this is after the great trials that I saw, so everything that we went through. And if, if you can, um, Roji, if you don't mind, right after that verse, read, read that, that next verse after he mentioned that um, your clothes have not waxed old and your shoes have not waxed old upon the, your foot. What's the next verse after that, Babak Ye have not eaten bread. Verse six, ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, mm -hmm. that ye might know that I am Yah, your Elohim. Amen, amen. Just, and just anybody, Bavaku Shah. Just elaborate. What do you think Moshe is trying to convey to the people when he said, your eyes, you have, the most I have not given you a heart to know, eyes to see or ears to hear, until this day. And he goes on to say that, you know, you have not eaten bread because we had the manna that he fed us from, right? We didn't have no strong drink, no wine, so we can know that your whole was our power. I mean, to, to me, it's clearly stating that what we went through those 40 years in the wilderness, was necessary for us to be the men and the women that we were. Shah Shamar, Babaku Shah. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, the point that I got from, I think oftentimes is overlooked, not in this chapter, but I think you know, it's in life. Um, Cause it talks about, you know, in the wilderness of 40 years without, you know, Know, the bread or the strong drink, you know, without those things, you know, the bread and the strong drink, you know, you, there's really not much to do, you know, and then you're in the wilderness, you know, so what are you really going to do? So you're kind of in a, you're in a, I would say a, a good spot for the most high to reach you, you know, to communicate with the most high, because, you know, the affairs of that life, you know, they, they weren't really a distraction during that time. So, you know, and if you think about it today, you know, we, you know, we have jobs, you know, of course we have families, we have responsibilities, you know, so yeah, it, it just, yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot in those uh, precepts, you know, just about seeking the most high without the external things. What more do we kind of talked about earlier? I yield. Amen. Yeah. Allowing the most high to reach you, spot on. Mm. That's where we headed, that's where we're going. Mori Dawu, Bavaku Shah. Come on now, Mori, I put my hand down and I still had to meditate on this, but um, okay, it's a, you didn't eat bread, nor did you have wine or strong drink. Mm. Mm. So mm. It's, it's a, when you look at today, right, you know, to, to bring it to today, uh, a lot of people, when they are going through something, they some people eat in order to try to get away from it, or some people try to become uh, intoxicated. As you said, you don't you can't self medicate, right, or um, overindulge in the yaya or the strong drink, um, in order for you to take the weight of what you're seeing, hearing. And um, what the Most High is placing before you, uh, I I do think it's quite heavy, and I haven't really mm. finished chewing um, on the aspect of the Most High saying that I mm. that mm. uh let, let me let me let me read this again. He said, "Yet mm. Yahweh have not given you a heart to perceive, eyes to see, mm. or ears to hear until this day." So, mm, to me, um, 
And I was just talking to uh, Adon yourself, and I think a couple other brothers about this as well. Is the concept of the most high placing you in situations for you to grow, but you never recognize the opportunity. So you see what's happening, but you you don't really see it. Or you hear what the most high, or you hear what somebody else is saying, right? But you don't hear the most high in it. And when that occurs, that's why you have to wander in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm here right there, uh, Aki. Amen. So what I would buy. Yeah, as you mentioned, mm. eyes to see is to hear, right? Mm. What they say, hindsight is 2020. I spoke about some of my personal issues, my divorce that I went through. At the time, I was devastated, separated from my daughter, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And my first approach, again, was to, wow, well, I'm not going to be married. I'm about to rip and run in these streets, right? But God, I mean, fast, he let you know that's not the way. And right when he spoke to me, all right, no, it's time for me to be celibate, right? It's time not to indulge in certain things that will bring me further away from the almighty. That's why it's better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. Because in the house of feasting, nobody's really focused on what's really important. But I started off in Ecclesiastes, yes, enjoy your portion in life, but always find a way to bring things back to what's really important, to its proper perspective. Because even when I look back at my divorce now, I'm like, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be married to the woman I'm married to now who was able to bring forth four sons by the grace and the, and, the, and the mercy of the Almighty. So now I had eyes to see uh, and I have ears to hear, like that's what y'all was telling me. So what you're going through right now is, is a part of the process. Don't allow that to destroy you or make you feel that God is, is putting it on you to destroy you or to harm you. He is preparing you for what is next. It's a time of trouble for Yaakov, but through it all, he will be saved. Jacob missed that time with Yosef, 17 years. But when he went back to Egypt, the Most High restored the 17 years. He died at 147. He restore it back to him all the years that the locusts have eaten. That was his promised line, land. Stick to the course, Israel. Don't give up. Yes, we may go without water. Yes, we may go without food. Yes, we may find ourselves in a situation where we don't know how are we going to get by? You don't think the creator knows that? That's what I said. I tested you these 40 years, but when you think about it, you're right. I haven't lacked anything. Our shoes haven't waxed old. We have everything that we need, even when we lack. That's why the holy days are so important. I know we're, we're coming up on Pesach in the Aviv. But think about Kak Sukkot, right? How the most I said during Sukkot, you dwell in tents for seven days. So you leave your, your structured dwelling that you're in, and then you go back and live how we live when we were coming of age during our poor stages. But even during that time, Yasa tells us to rejoice and be happy. What? I mean, when you think about it, what do you mean? You tell them to dwell in tents and because now you're focused on where you came from. You didn't forget about the, the hard times and everything that y'all put us through to get us to the point that we at now. 
Because Yisrael, our problem was Yeshurun, wax fat, and kick. We got too big to the point that we felt like we did not need the Almighty. Bat Yosef, Mubakusha. Okay, Tora, don't. You seen a, you seen a post up in there spitting fire right now, don't. I appreciate it. I know, yeah. Um, for uh, for Dabarim, I think for for that instance right there, I don't think that they seen the angle until that point in time. And I wanted to pull a, a precept to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that. And before I do that, I want to expound and say that's that's me pointing the finger at myself first. That's a lot of the times the problem. We don't really have the end goal in sight. And it's kind of like you're trying to figure out what's going on, trying to decipher, trying to, again, maneuver around in the wilderness, trying to figure everything out until the Most High actually gives you a, a, a heart of understanding. That's right. It. So I want to go to um, better sheet. Uh, Genesis 40, uh, 45, I, I got it. Um, okay, uh, 45, I'm gonna start at verse four and it reads, and Yosef said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came there and he said, I ain't Yosef, your brother, whom you sold into Mizraim. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For Yahuwah, it's like a, for Elohim, did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which thou shalt neither be earring or harvest. And Elohim sent me before you to preserve you and prosper you in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. Here's the angle. <clears throat> so now, so now, it is not that you have sent me, but Elohim. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh, a lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Mizraim. So due to what happened to Yosef, we, we know the story. We know the trials and tribulations that he went through. And we understand that the Most High was with him throughout all of it. And it's at this pivotal moment where we finally see what the end goal was for him. So uh, I, I lean on that very heavy. <laughs> um, it, it, it really sticks to me. That's one of the pillar scriptures for myself to keep myself grounded and understand that, you know, there might be those times where you don't, you don't see the end goal. You don't see the, the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's where, um, <laughs> that's where faith comes into play. You, you have to truly walk. <clears throat> Oh, mm. a lot of thoughts run to my mind. Slack is for the other side. But uh, <laughs> again, like I said, Tove to lesson, and you're hitting on all cylinders. And I appreciate every word because it's, it's, it's pricking me. It's pricking me. And I yield the floor to uh, my op. To everybody for that. Yeah, at that point, Yosef was able, most I gave him eyes to see and ears to hear. You're right. He didn't fully understand. But now he knew when his brother and his family came down and he was set in a position because God will elevate us. Prepare yourself, brothers, for your elevation. But it's all for the glory of the Most High and to serve his people. Mori Dawu, Bavakusha. But you can't run. Don't run. That's just that's what I'm getting from you, don't you? cannot run from that hard time it doesn't work there is no elevation without that hard time so if you're always running from it you're always trying to duck it then how can you ever grow that quiet spirit, we see two times where prophets of the creator ran and the most i didn't tell them to run it's it's, it's different when the creator tells you to run like melech dawid he told Malek Dawid to run. Don't touch Shaul. But he didn't tell Eliyahu to run. He didn't tell Yonah to run. And you know he didn't tell him to run. Why? Because he sent them right back to where they were supposed to be at. 
So every time you run and you get put right back in that situation, the most high said, tighten up. It's kind of like your moms or your pops when you back in the day. If if you run from this fight, I'm gonna beat you up and then I'm gonna send you right back out there. So you can run if you want to, but the most high gonna tap you and then he's gonna send you right back to where you're supposed to be at. And that's for all of us, which is why as brothers, we got to make sure that we make sure our brothers stay strong. We are that strong defense, that strong wall for our brothers. We're not going nowhere. We're going to fight together. So turn our bow for you, Adol. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I named the, the talk. Kazak, Kazak, we need Kazik. Be strong. Be strong, and we will be strengthened. It's our Yahoo. Floor is yours, my lord. Okay. Um, I didn't catch the beginning part of this lesson. However, I did catch the past forty-five minutes, and I have to say, Toda Yah, because I was just talking to my Isha about being in unknown waters right now in my life. Um. Where I'm at right now, I have never seen before growing up. Um, I lost my mom at 23. Um, Pops wasn't there until I was 23. It was a lot of moving pieces that happened in my life. You know, I was married and then that didn't work out. Today, my, my, my son just turned 12, told I, yeah. But even in that, that scenario, where I'm at now was greater than any place I ever thought I would ever be. You know, you were talking about your yeah, Isha, like my Isha is the one that helped me come into this truth, you know, um, because her prayers for her, the one, a, a, a spiritual man, she didn't even know what she was asking for. But as I was just looking at where we were living, I was looking at my kids play I was cleaning up behind the yard and I'm like, I'm on the phone with my wife and says, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, now I'm just stepping into the unknown because I didn't see these different things growing up. I didn't have this type of faith in the most high. I didn't see the praise and the prayers and the, the gather. I didn't see none of these things growing up. So it's like I'm growing and I'm moving as the most high leads me. And then I'm coming and I'm listening to this call and it's like, you're talking about the journey. We don't know the end destination, but we know that in the process of the journey, the most high is gonna move us in various ways for our good even when it may seem like it doesn't seem feel good to us because those tragedies those trials those losses these are the things that help mold us in the the, the fire he said i will purify you i will refine you through the fire so you could come out as pure silver and pure gold that's a precious jewel our destination is to be a precious jewel in his, in his glory that is the most high through his work, through his craftsmanship, through his design, through his parallels. And just to hear the word just come out, it just confirms like he hears the conversations and he's showing the witnesses because this is how we grow. And this is how we become better as men, that we can lead our family, that we can lead our communities, that we can stand firm and be steadfast in this faith, knowing that our Elohim lives and he is true to his word. So I say Todaya for putting this word in your heart and for you to have the courage to bring it forth because it's an intimate word. And I say Todaya because it, it brings tears to my eyes to know that this is where the Most High is having us right before Pesach, right before the Feast of Unleavened. You know, this is the, the cleansing that he's looking for, the acknowledging of seeing who he is in our life and recognizing that 
this is nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. Keep walking. And I'm going to show you right. So, Todaya, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda Rabba for those words, brother Zariyahu. You're right, it's a journey. It is a journey. Sages teaches us the end of the matter is better than the beginning thereof, right? And we just have to stick to the course. I mean, life, it, I mean, a lot of different turns and twists will come your way. Share one more personal thing with the family um, before we go hit the last precept and call it a night. Last year, unexpectedly, um, my sister passed away, right? And um, my sister had eight children, seven under the age of 18. Fathers, for the most part, weren't really present with some of the older ones. So going through the process of burying my sister, it was a lot. I'm like, wow. I mean, a sibling that close to me. And that's the second sibling I done lost, you know. Lost a brother my freshman year in college. He was 24. He was murdered. And I went to school with that on my mind. But it, these things brought me closer to the most high, right? So losing my sister last year. And now she's gone. The fathers weren't around. Told her, yeah, she was, she was married. So... Her younger children, the father was there. But then she had four other daughters. For the most part, the fathers were not present. And I'm looking at our family, my siblings, and the creator has really provided for me and my Isha to the point that, you know, we, we have a little space, right? And I said, we got to do the right thing. You know, the right thing is to, is to take these girls in. And um, it's been a year, like you said, stepping out there on faith, not knowing what I was going to do, but Yah has provided a way. And these girls are doing well. They're in school. They have come and in, in, in to this household and really brought forth a, a new light. It's beautiful. And mind you, me and my Isha, we already have our four boys. So we went from four to eight, you know, in a matter of and unexpected. But it was no time to complain. And that's part of the reason why I started fasting more and drawing closer, because as more responsibilities and more things come on us, we will need y'all more. And let's finish it out. Bavakusha, if we can, my brother G, in the book of Genesis once again, chapter 32, verses 23. Through 29. Book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 23. And it reads And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he had saw that he had, sorry, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with Yah and with men, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou do ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And we have been blessed. A prince, we have striven with Elohim and basically saying that fighting within ourselves to do right before Elohim and with man attacking us on so many different levels, but we have prevailed. 
I thank the Most High for uh, giving me the words to, to share with the brothers tonight because I know we all have things that we're going through. Um, keep y'all first. It's okay not to be okay. Don't keep a lot of things bottled in. We spoke about that the Hebrew word loon, which is translated as murmuring, but also to dwell or abide in that place that is not safe. Find the joy, even through the, the hardships and everything that you go through. So with that, I'll open the line for the brothers to share any words or any comments. But thank you for the opportunity to, to speak and my thoughts for the brothers this evening. Love you all, and I pray the most I will bless and keep you all. Shalom, shalom. Total blessing, Aki. All praise to the most high. Total everybody. Total for your reading, too. Excellent. Really nice. Yes, my brother, let's go ahead and start with um, the Bayit of Yosef once again. Barak Hashem. My ox stole the words right out of my mouth. Total blessing, I don't. Total blessing. Um, mm. I'll say it again as far as... Um, me going through that, <clears throat> that was me today. Like I said, he, he was pricking me the whole entire time. And I appreciate that. Um, one of the things I think, uh, and this is for myself, that I need to do is to reach out more. Because uh, we, all, we, all we all have that moment where we kind of break away and we seek out the creator uh, in our days. And it, like, I don't even said it earlier, he take a day off. Uh, he ended up uh, afflicting his being during that, during that time frame. And we have that, we can set that up. But I know for myself, a lot of times, I don't reach out to my brothers, even when I have my cell phone right in my pocket the whole time, you know? So I, I for one, am getting better at doing that or trying to um, reach out to my brothers, uh, reach out to my strong front and, relinquish some of the burdens that we normally carry on ourselves, thinking that we can conquer the world uh, in our day-to-day -day grinding. Uh, and it, it's eventually it's gonna bog us down to the point where we will be at a humble state and won't know how to climb out of it, you know? So I, I speak to myself first to uh, implore myself to reach out, especially in times uh, like today, and when I was at a low point a little bit, um, like I said, thanks for Maisha, she kind of pulled me out, but uh, what if she wasn't there at that moment, you know what I'm saying? And again, I had my cell phone on me. I could have reached out to anybody on this line. So uh, I'll say a sleek eye for that. And uh, I know that I will attempt to do better, but uh, <laughs> total blessing, I don't, total blessing. Keep on hitting all cylinders. And just like my Akazari Yahoo uh, put it out, it's, it's, it's a perfect time. Uh, Right before, right before this car comes to truly focus on those things that we would consider eleven. Kane, we got those external things <clears throat> that we were talking about as far as in your home, in your body. Uh, I was talking with uh, Adon Dawood about those things that are spiritual, those spiritual leavens that we have in our heart to try to get those things out of the way. Even sometimes you might not even recognize that it's there. Just like in a physical household, you have to move things around. You have to shift some things around. The most high will shift some things around to reveal those things to where now you have the ability to clean those things up. Now you have the ability to get those areas in your life straight with the help of the most high, with the help of your brothers. So again, I, I say it one more time, Tob, 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 lesson of dawn. I appreciate that. I know every brother on this line does so too. How you the floor? So everybody, yourself, much love to you, brother. Um, a great reminder with uh, Pesach coming up. Yeah, I know we have the unleavened bread, like you were speaking about the altar and, and what's allowed, only the unleavened cakes, because y'all doesn't want us to come puffed up with our ego. He really wants that Oni, you know, that's what they call it. They call it Lekum Oni, 
which is the unleavened bread, but also the poor man's bread. That's so why I also spoke about Coxsuko dwelling in those tents. Don't forget those times because that really helped us to be the men that we are today. Shah Shumar Babaku Shah. Okay, you know, Toya and Totoraba for the, the lesson and, uh, you know, praise the Most High. And also for all the brothers that played a, a part and, you know, bring out the lesson today. Uh, you know, one thing I took from the lesson, you know, was, you know, don't, don't replace the most high with, you know, the things of this life, whether it be, you know, something tangible or intangible, you know, don't, you know, remove the most high and, you know, put something else in his place. That's what I got from it. And, you know, this is one of those lessons where, you know, you can understand it, but you definitely have to, you know, retain it, you know, because, you know, you definitely don't want to forget it and you be in the same mindset, you know, next week. So this is something that, you know, I definitely have to, you know, meditate on, you know, to, you know, retain it. So next week come or even a year from now, you know, five years, most high willing, you know, that I can, you know, have the same mindset, you know. So thank you. I mean, to whatever by, if it's a process and those all y'all who hit on the nose, it's just a journey. It is definitely a journey. Bulakwasha, Saint Moshe. Hey, I just um I know I'm, I'm fairly new to the group. I just wanted to formally introduce myself. Uh, Moshe out of Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, <clears throat> I was introduced to uh, ran to the brother uh Moray Shanakia. They introduced me to the brother Johanna and they introduced me to the group with the brothers. So I just wanted to officially introduce myself. Um down here, been in the truth for about seven years now, going forward. And I um, appreciate y'all brothers for welcoming me into the group best you can, as far as what y'all knew of me anyway. And the lesson is definitely needed. And um, just, just living through life, it makes, a, it makes a real difference because i dealing with my brothers here, I'm going through just the day to day struggles, definitely. Reaching out to brothers, speaking to brothers to uplift your spirit, like you were talking about, makes a makes a world of difference. It refreshes your spirit and keep you back on track, knowing that everything is done by the hands of them. <clears throat> keep it short. I just wanted to introduce myself so everybody know who I am. You know, seeing a new name in the group, and I hear on that. Amen. As we say in Hebrew, Baruch Haba, basically means welcome. As you can see, the language is all about going out the blessing. You hear the word Baruch. Haba means to come. We're welcome to you as well. I pray that the Most High will continue to strengthen you and your family. I'm happy that uh, God's awake, awakening his people. And I know there's a portion out there in Alabama. You like shine and, and draw people closer to the Almighty. Um, I don't see anybody, any additional hands up. So I'll ask Mori Dawu to give us some final comments and um, Potentially a prayer before we close out. Okay, okay. First and foremost, again, um, to to you, uh, Chief Man, uh, Yermiyahu, uh, for the wonderful lesson, the dome, powerful lesson that we definitely need. Uh, uh, shalom, shalom to Saint Moshe. Um, as the big guy said, uh, Kaba, um, definitely you're welcome. Um, even the pace uh, Passat in uh, North Carolina in about three weeks, um, and as well as on the other studies. But um, definitely again, Todarba, uh, Yamiyahu. And uh, just, I hope everybody is is listening, not only to this lesson, um, this previous lesson, and everything that's been going on for the, for the, for the past month, uh, even as we go into these next three weeks before the, uh, feast season begins. It's um definitely about the mind, the heart, and uh drawing near to the creator so you can hear what needs to be taken up. So told that again. Um so I pray everybody's hearts and minds clear so we can tefila and um close out for the night. Most high, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word coming through your servant. For him allowing you, Father, to speak to those who need it. 
that we may hear what he has said, that we may understand what he has said, that we may honor you by actually implementing what he has said in our lives. That we may know that tests and trials and tribulations are necessary for the purification process. That we may be matured in you, O oh Yah. So strengthen us, Father Yah, as you said that you would do for those who wait upon you, who call upon your name, who trust in you, that you would never leave them nor forsake them, that you will be with them, that you will walk with us through the waters, that you will be with us within the flames. As we continue to approach Pasat, will we remember you fighting for us, you redeeming us, and you bringing us out with a mighty arm. And we keep in mind, Father Yah, that you said that you would do it again. And that this next time will be far greater. May we never lose hope. And never lose that anticipation for the redemption of your children. May you strengthen each and every man on this line. That we are able to humble ourselves before you. To lead our families spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. that they may see what it looks like in this day and age for a man of Yah to walk on this earth. We say to it unto you. May you forgive our trespasses. May you forgive our shortcomings. And may we be able to see those things that we may not do them again. So that Yah for your loving commitments, your mercies. But we are unworthy. But you still lend out your long suffering that we may have another chance and another day to get it right. Hold on. Bukta Yahuwah, Buk Hashem Yahuwah, Buk Habab Hashem Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Selah. So everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you for your time tonight. It was a blessing. Do appreciate you.